Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Conversations in Groove podcast. I'm Benji Johnson, and I'm going to be your host. You might ask yourself, what are conversations in groove? Heck, I don't know, but we're going to find out the whole season what they are. We're going to find out what your groove is and what some of my really cool friends' grooves are. Is it music? Is it TV and film? Do they act? Or do they just listen to records with a deep groove to them? Well, we're going to find out all season long. I got some really cool people coming up and some really big episodes coming up. So prepare yourself for the Conversations in Groove podcast right here live from Earth Tones Recording Studio. All right, welcome to episode two, technically. It can be whatever episode you want to watch it in order of, of the Conversations in Groove podcast. And my guest this day and this week and this month is the indubitable, <laughs> that's the next biggest word I know besides ubiquitous, mm-hmm. <laughs> Eric Gales. Hey, man. Glad, uh, thanks for having me. Dude, Excited thank you for here. doing it. Yep. So... Let's talk about all things EG. Mm -hmm. And where I like to start is where you started. I know you. We work in here. But I knew you before that because your records used to ride in the car with me years ago. Your first record. Mm -hmm. The first place I ever knew you or saw you was on MTV when they actually had music videos. Mm -hmm. And... I had read about you in a guitar magazine, went and bought your first record, and had just listened to them from then on out. Mm -hmm. And then you moved to our fair town of Greensboro, Mm -hmm. and and I was like, is that like Eric Gales? Eric Gales lives in Greensboro? And then that happened, and you and I met about a year ago, over a year ago, and started working in here. So I want... You to tell me, so that's my synopsis of you. I can look at that real, like, broad. So my, I want you to tell the people where you started from. I go, this guy was young, and he had a, and he had a record deal. So that's all I really know about it. Ha, tell me about you. Tell me about you when you first started in that first deal and how that all came about at such a young age. Well, I grew up in Memphis, uh, Came out of a family with a lot of music generated in the whole family. It was already there. Uh, so it was inevitable to uh, wind up involving myself in some kind of music in some form or fashion. Uh, you know, picked up the guitar at four years old. I would see my brothers playing. They were playing. They were also left handed, by the way, and upside down. And, you know, some kind of way, I just picked up the guitar that way. I was initially drawn to drums. So I would be, you know, imitating the drum patterns with knives and forks uh, to the music that my older brothers would be playing around the house. And that was where I think the candle first got lit really good. And my mom and dad were very religious people. So, you know, we were definitely, it was a must that we had to be in church. So, which um, in hindsight, that uh, actually wind up being uh, one of the essential ingredients in the makeup and build of who I have become because there's a very kindred spirit uh, relation to the same feel and emotion that you get when the spirit is high in the particular type of church that we came up in, which was, you know, Kojic Sanctified Church. There's a lot of dancing and shouting and praising God and you know, music that they call high tarry, and, 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 and it's pretty intense. And uh, for one that have never witnessed that and come to one of my shows, you would have no idea that there's a relationship uh, to that as far as the emotion and intensity that uh, is, is brought forth. <clears throat> but it's a direct revelation from those times that I recall being in church and things that I would see, and it just kept with me and along with that it just began to um, it began to be uh, 
things that I just kept piling on the plate uh, that I was absorbing in every bite um, coming forth, you know, and that began to surface into different influences and styles and genres that my older brothers would be playing around the house and hit me on to. And my oldest brother, Eugene, then took, you know, me under his wing, you know, after he saw that I was really serious about playing the guitar and began to show me do's and don'ts and, you know, give me a little test to learn a song. And if I did, he'd take me to go get an ice cream cone or something <laughs> like that, which was the highlight of my day to do that. And, and he'd give me something and about, by the next day I'd have it learned. And uh, this was like very intense stuff, you know. Um, and this was, this started at six or seven years old. And so, you know, my brother was like, man, my little brother has something very, very, very special. At the same time, my brother, little Jimmy King was, you know, he had done the same process with him. And, you know, he began to hone in more on the straight ahead Albert King, B.B. King, sort of blue Freddie King type of style and, you know, made a name for himself. His real name was Manuel Gales, but he, uh, his stage name was little Jimmy King and uh, rest his soul. But, you know, all of that made for the the makeup of, of who I am and, you know, um, kind of going forward, that was how it all, you know, and then the whole part wood shedding and that, you know, festered and 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 uh, just began to hone in on the craft even more. I was soaking up everything like a sponge, uh, from drums to bass to guitar to keys, everything, all of that, gospel, church, everything, jazz, funk, classical, everything that you could possibly be influenced by. And, uh, you know, there was a time that we played this Battle of the Bands and there was a producer in the audience and he said, man, do you guys have a deal? You ever been in the studio? So as such, us, we had never been. That led to a production deal and then we got signed at wow. 15. So that's and you And you were 15? 15. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. So there was really not a lot of time when you talk about woodshedding and and your brothers your brother was there your brothers were there there wasn't really a time where it was like they were all they were always kind of there with you while you were i mean not necessarily with you like in the room but i mean with you they they were there with you as you were going because your deal happened at so young mm -hmm. there was very rarely amount of time where it was just like just left up to just left up to eg to figure it out like i mean you did figure it out but they were mm -hmm. they were sort of helping you the whole way yeah right? they were yeah they were you know it was kind of a combination a mix and blend you know yeah. uh, the woodshedding was all in the room with the door closed right you know uh the uh, as thing, it should be the thing about it is <laughs> is the work had to be put in though i mean yeah. there's no getting around it that the work had to be put in and it's the type of work that has to be driven by specifically inspiration and it has to be inspiration because inspiration makes practicing not feel like homework. Ah, dude, come on, exactly. So, then, first deal happened, and that was with a major label at 15. Pretty major deal, yeah, bless your records. And you just rolled right in, 15 years old, right out the house, right out the battle of the bands, mm -hmm. and... Went right onto it. Right into a studio? Yep. Wow. Did you guys gig a lot as your as your Eric Gale's band? Did you? We didn't did you? actually tour a whole lot, man. We could have done way, way more, but you know, maybe, you know, we toured with the first year that the record came out, and it was time for the next record, and then you know, it was some kind of it was a, it, it was a, we recorded the second record, and then uh, there was uh, you know I, I I vaguely remember being very disappointed in the reaction from the record company president at the time. He flew us all the way to New York to tell us he didn't like the record and to do it over again. And I believe that essentially was the start of, because uh, up till then there was all positive things coming energy wise, you know, but at that point I just didn't know how to handle that. You know what I mean? And we just worked so hard and it's not that I wasn't able to accept criticism, positive or negative, it's just that, like, I was still a kid, so that yeah. threw me. You know, yeah, 16, 17, you still a kid, man. You know what I mean? Just end well, it's like day. getting a bad grade on a test, man. If you're, used to, if you're used to making straight A's and somebody says, oh, you made an F, and they don't tell you how to fix it, and basically you get your, you know, like you said, literally flying you, you see that you see all the effort put into telling you that you've that you failed, right. essentially.
Right. And then and then you got to figure out how to do it. Did you guys do the record over? Yeah. You no, did? No, we did a couple of songs. We redid we, we, we did four songs. Uh, and we brought in uh, Terry Thomas from uh, the group Giant. He produced Giant and this dude. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he produced uh, like four of the songs we redid. Why is it something that I get, like every day I learn something? Yeah, man. And, uh, <laughs> I that learned came something I it, didn't know about you. And that turned out to be an amazing record. I mean, it was before. Giant him, but at the was, time was like, they were blowing they, up, they right? They were huge, yeah. So that happened, man. And, you know, we just went forward, man. But still, there was something that lingered with me. Um, as far as, you know, that, that sparked my interest into the street life, just some reason out of curiosity and naturally being a teen, you know, that all, you wow. know, came into circumvent, um, a lifestyle that I grew into that would, uh, forego a lasting for, you know, a good 30 years of, you know, deep, deep addiction research, if you wow. will. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I never, I declined in, you know, personal health and everything. I declined in, you know, I never, the, the, the gift never was taken away from me, but the want to play was overseeded by the want for addiction. And it wasn't addiction in guitars or music. It was addiction in all things wrong. So right. that, you know, led to, you know, that extensive, you know, and everything in between Prison, jail, everything, you know. Wow. Um, you know, just health declining, losing massive weight, uh, arrested several times, carrying guns, all kinds of stuff that, you know, I honestly don't know. I mean, I had to have had uh, Angel with me every time I went out for 30 years or something and people praying or something that I am even able to be here having this conversation with you right now. But... Um, you know, I would say, but I still, I still was, you know, 2099, 98 was when we did the Gales Brothers record. And uh, you, I think we did one show, two shows together on that record. And, you know, that label doesn't exist anymore. It was on House Blues label, but it was a really banging ass record, man. And, and, and it was called Left Hand Brand. And it featured us all three brothers, you know, featured and... It was a it was a impeccable job done to showcase three featured guitar players that are all brothers that's in the same family that all have record deals of their own, and this was like huge, um, you know. After that, and then you know, 2000, I got with MCA and did the That's What I Am record, which was you know it was pretty huge. MCA they had they had a subsidiary label of Nightbird that was a Hendrix label that was signed to MCA, and I was on that label, and that record came out and. For what it's worth, I don't think it was pushed and promoted like it was because that to me was the one of the iconic records of my life. It was a very defining record for me. Really? And uh, yes, it was. Was it, it like? A, was it almost like you taught? It, it was called. It was called. You said it was called the Gales Brothers. No, I'm no. on to 2000 now. That's oh, oh, that's oh, what oh, I am. Oh, oh this gotcha, is uh, gotcha, gotcha, this gotcha, is uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Eric Gales. This now. is you. Yeah, this is me. Yeah, it's the next solo record that I put out. After the second Eric Gales band record, okay, so there was a Gales Brothers record in between. Oh, okay, and between uh, Picture of a Thousand Faces, and that's what I. So am. there was a long time between your second Eric Gales band record and then your next yeah. record. Yeah, maybe six, seven years. All right, you know, and then you know, just began to do the sequence of you know recording you know records and you know got with Mike Varney and was basically pumping out an album a year for for quite a while, from 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. And then I had to go do some prison time for a couple of years, but when I got out, I hit the stage running, and then that's when uh, Relentless came out in 2010, and that got me awarded Best Blues Rock Guitarist of the Year. And I mean, that was a great way to come out of prison no, and see no that, kidding. you know what I mean? And, you know, and the Relentless is... It's by far one of my best albums I think that I have done. Yeah, uh, it's an amazing record. And then they kept proceeding after that, and albums and albums, and you know, a couple of record label changes, and you know, in between, you know, after getting, you know, still in in active addiction during all this time, you know what I mean, and, and really didn't do a whole lot of touring, and you know, I could have capitalized a whole lot more on my career if I had been just mentally in that space. But my mental space was. What, where can I get more dope? Right. And, right. you know, so, you know, these things just 
wasn't rising up to the level that I wanted it to, not even in the awareness that it was me that was the one that was holding myself back. So uh, when you have the uh, fortunate capability to years after going through something, be able to look back on it in the right state of mind and see where the problem was, uh, that's 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 money came by that to even just be around to even have the hindsight to look around uh, when you indulge in and 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 involved yourself as I did in activities that could have at any day in any moment at any minute or a second of the day could have winded me up dead before my time and yeah you know but all of that that I am talking about that I that I had no idea you know up until. You know, I would say almost five years ago, I thought for sure that my main purpose was music. And, you know, it 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 turned out that I came into a realization now that the music was just a byproduct. It was just, a, you know, it was a it was the it was it was a byproduct. I mean, what I found out that, man, I had no idea that I was contracting all of this intel and material that led to me finding out what my real purpose was. And my real purpose was my story, my life. Take the music away. My life in itself is enough to make one stand back in shock and awe. And the added dessert to it is the facet and way. It's a couple of different nuggets on there. The expression that I give when I play the music that I play about my story of my life is a whole shock and awe itself. But the other shock and awe is this unorthodox way that people see me play that's left-handed and upside down. That is the other shock and awe that these are shock and awes that stand alone by themselves. But when you compile them all together, this dude play this way. This dude got this kind of passion. Wow, I've never seen this before. This dude, you know, he's actually right and right-handed, but he play left-handed upside down. You <laughs> add that on top of all that, you know, and wow, this kid really was came out at 15 years old. It's, you know, and oh, wow, dear. this did, dude did dope all his life, but he don't look like he been on dope all his life. You add all of that to the situation. So that is what I come to realize that my story is for it to be something that could shine and shine bright to anybody that don't know my story and do the back history and find out about what it is. Now, I also believe in this not being braggadocious about it. I think from standing outside of my body, looking at an Eric Gale show, I think there's a wow factor there, even not knowing any of the other stuff oh, that I told you about. Oh, just walking in cold off the street. There's, there's cold off the street. Cold off the street. But once you, you know, it's more yeah. than just that. It, Man, this dude got, is a reason why he's playing like he's playing and the stuff that he's playing and how it comes out of me when it comes out of me is a reason for that. And yeah. my purpose is the stuff that I've been through to be a light to show other people that, man, if I walk through fire for that long and standing here to tell you about it, not only tell you about it, but play about it. Right. It's uh, it's pretty, I'm in awe pretty much myself actually just sitting here talking about the story because I'm talking about the story as if there is an invisible person in between us that I'm talking about. As if it's not you. As if it's not me. I'd, and it gets pretty, in, it's, it's pretty intense, man. And it's, it, uh, it, it, it takes, you know, and every, you know, every so often during the show, different times in the show, that realization comes to me and it gets so overwhelming that I feel like I'm going to spontaneously combust. <laughs> At times when I'm playing, I'm not so I have at you, but no, I know what you're talking about. I have about. no other way to I've let it, it out but yell and express and just you know, just you know. And oftentimes people see me yelling and people see me talking and this and this and that during the show and I'm playing. There is something that I, there is somebody that I'm talking to while I'm while I'm playing. A lot of the times I am telling negative forces and negative energies that right now in this moment in this time you cannot win with me. Today. You're going to tell, you're talking to the devil. Get behind me. You can't me. win. You can't win. Right now, I'm right fighting here. you with everything that I have. I hear you, man. And it's, 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 it's the most powerful force that you have no power against. Right. So right now, 
I'm yelling at you. I'm so telling like, you to go knock at somebody else's door because I'm not home. So an EG show, from what I get, from hearing you talk about it like that, talk about yourself that way, which is crazy because it is like talking about somebody in a third person. Because mm -hmm. it's somebody that you have, have obviously left behind, mm -hmm. like another you. It didn't, it didn't, you wouldn't be you at this point had, I not had you not gone through that. Right. But to look at that and go, that's another person. Uh -huh. And know that, and, and like you said, I'm at this point of steering the ship right now, and I'm in control of everything, and I can look at that past. And the thing is, what I find out about you is you don't run away. You don't run away from your past. No. But you also don't take it and use it. You, you are an example. You are like an example that, like you said, people walk in off the street. And you're an example to me of someone who has been through it, has lived to tell the story. But when you tell the story, you're not doing it from a way... You're, to me, you don't do it in a preachy way mm -mm. to where I'm going to tell you that if you're doing the same thing that I used to do, that it's horrible and you need to get... But you provide, you provide all the tools mm -hmm. for people to go about getting themselves out of that situation if they are in it like you had to come to, I guess, a realization yourself mm -hmm. about you. Like yep. you talk about you. And you talk, you talk about the past you in a way that like you just talked about. You just said... I, I, th this, these are decisions I made that were bad and they were my fault. And you tell me that's anything I did in the past, man, it's my fault. You don't blame it on you. You don't tend to blame you. You don't blame. I've never heard you blame anything in your past on anyone else except you mm -hmm. because you got, and you also with a lot of help got yourself out of it. So to me, that's amazing because I mean, man, there's so many things in there that I, it's almost like I need to go back and decode them. Like you talk about playing, you talk about playing left-handed and upside down. Mm -hmm. And this is not necessarily a guitar podcast, but we talk about guitars and we talk about recording and we talk about all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. You playing left-handed and upside down, if, if somebody that's listening to this podcast is not a guitar fan or, or a guitar player or anything, and you're listening to it for any other reason, left-handed and upside down, if you explain to them a guitar is strung 95% of the time for right-handed people, mm -hmm. people that play right-handed. I'd say 98%. All right. More. More. Way more, right? Yeah. So, so basically, the playing, odds of this happening is man. <laughs> well, you know, crazy. Thing is, I have a, I have a first cousin that plays the exact same yeah, way, man. and the reason that he did is yeah. the reason that you tell me is that that's the only way guitars were to me. There weren't left-handed yeah. guitars, yeah. and there weren't ones that you know. I didn't even did. know what that meant. And when I picked it up and got comfortable playing like I did, and I didn't you, even realize that my brothers were actually playing that way too. So your so, brothers played that way, and yeah. you you basically learned from them by by mimicking I, the I, way I'm, that they I'm, did. I, I am going to go even in more in depth. What I'm saying is, I don't consciously recall being aware that that was the way that they were holding the guitar. What I'm saying is, is what I did was picked it up. I could have been consciously aware or subconsciously aware or unconsciously aware or whatever, but what felt comfortable to me was like this. <laughs> so by the time anybody ever made you aware of was, that, you too, were deep into EG was, world. Was, there was no uh, turning back. It was quote unquote too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'd already dived in. So anyway, you covered, I was going to go back and cover because you just briefly said at the very beginning of this thing about left-handed and upside down. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the tricks that people comment on all the time. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you're playing it left-handed and Feet, upside down mouth, or not. Elbows, it's nubs. it's mind numbing. Yeah. I, and I say that as a compliment. Thank you. But you and I sit and and we sit in the studio and I engineer. I play guitar, but I don't pick up a guitar around him. <laughs> I pick up a guitar. <laughs> you think I ever pick yes, up a guitar he, around yes, him? Yes, he do. But yes, I, do. I, I'm not because when he's in the room, there's one guitar player. Oh, and man. it's him. And it's him. And, and please. So when I watch you play. I can't decode what you're doing because it is left-handed upside down. But I think if you literally I put a camera, if I took one of these cameras and put it on you and I superimposed it and flipped it to where I could see it, I still couldn't decode. Hey, man, you know, hey. Because you can get to things playing that way. That's not even the fact of the, it's not even the apparatus. It's just the fact that your musical mind and your chord knowledge is what is staggering to me. You play fast as lightning and there's, there's that's always been the case as far as your, like your solo work and your leads and stuff like that. But your chord knowledge is staggering. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding you, man. I saw when I watch you play and you and you and I both like you tell you say that I fold up. <laughs> Me too. 
fold up, man. And because he'll play a chord and he'll look at me and say, listen to that chord. And, I'm like, and, how, and you've been doing this how long? And, long time. And it still, affects that the same still way. resonates same. and affects you. Your playing still affects you, and can't that's happen. what keeps people going. Yeah, I can't help Is that me. one thing, if there's one more thing added into the stew, uh-huh. and you realize it when you're doing it, and you go, man. Man. And I look at that chord and I'm thinking, dang, I, I might want to ask him how he plays that chord. But he's obviously remarking about it like he just made it up and learned it himself. I'm not the originator. <laughs> I'm just a vessel. <laughs> you got that right, man. But golly, man. what a vessel. Man, you're a vessel that's got like a V8 with like my V12. <laughs> <laughs> V12. <laughs> oh, man. oh, my goodness. Anyway. Yeah. So... I, man, I think that's great about your career because that covers that covers a lot of ground because you made a remark when we were working in here. Uh, when we first started working, we were talking about albums and stuff like that. And at that point, you had 18 records out. Mm-hmm. The first Gales band with the two, that was two N- records. 91. Right? That was two records that I, that I purchased with my own money, mm-hmm. you know, and listened to them, saw the video, saw all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then... 16 other records in there man there's a lot of people man that go through a that, that'll go through a period in their life like oh boy that was the dark times and that was a that was a valley and all this stuff mm-hmm. dude in your valley you put out 16 <laughs> records yeah, yeah that's right and the thing being just like you said man it never that part of you never stopped never it never went away nope and it's amazing it's amazing to me that there's that much material in there. You and I will work on stuff in here and you'll play me a song and I'll say, where does that? And you'll name the exact record it's off of what year it came out. And if you go back through those records, there's hidden, I mean, not even hidden gems. There's just gems on all of them. man. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing to me, you know, to look back on that much work in, a period of time that if the public looked at you and said, ah, oh, you know, Gales was, you know, Gales was an addict and he was all this. And it's like, in, in still in the meantime, pumping out badass stuff. Charming. Really? I mean, and that stuff is all in your catalog. It's still, it, the, the, you weren't, you weren't just, you weren't just, you know, coasting. You weren't just coasting and putting stuff out. No, well, no, no. You know, you no. weren't just doing it and saying, man, I got like, to me, e- even during all that, the passion for the music was still strong enough to where you were putting out records that still to this day stand up. Like you say, that was the best record I ever did. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, 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 I have to say that for that, I'm, 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 I'm pleased that, you know, that I can look back, even though in Hayes, uh, right. still be, you know, pleased with outcome of work. Yeah. Yeah, man. So let's always, people always say fast forward to the present. It's really hard to fast forward across Mm -hmm. 16 records, but it's also hard to talk about 16 records in a, in a 45 minutes or an hour that Mm -hmm. I want to, that I, that I, um, that I thank you for setting this time. No no worries, man. So, um, so let's talk about what you got going on right now that is in the process of building up to big Mm-hmm. Big things. So we've Man, got this. We've got this new record, and I want you to tell record. everybody about the one that's going to be the latest greatest. Latest greatest is going. This record is going to be called Crown. It's produced by Joe Bonamassa and Josh Schmidt. Uh, it has a who's who in the writing. Uh, I collaborated with some of the greats: Kev Mo, Tom Hambridge, Joe B, Josh. LaDonna, my wife, she got in on the writing. Who is amazing, and I'm going to have her on as her own individual guest. Yeah, man. I'm going to have her on as her own individual guest, man. And you, you should. Talk about, oh, you uh, should. Uh, you on. should. Yeah. Um, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And so this record, man, I'm telling you, it's going to be huge. We're looking forward to come out the top of 2022, January. Uh, that is well worth the anticipation. Um uh, a couple of things involving TV, a couple of things involving film, uh, movie is in the works. Uh, just did the new launch of my website on April 1st and the outpour and amazing support for, you know, the web store and everything at, uh, at ericgales.com and the new website and everything. It's just, it's it's the next dimension 
And uh, even as I talk to you, there is another dimension being developed as we speak that's going to take it to even depths that I couldn't imagine that the brand of Eric Gales could be seen in. And uh, I just think that, you know, I didn't survive everything that I've been through in life to hop off the ride right now because my destination hadn't been achieved. Oh man. Yet. Not and, even close. and that it's quite a bit that is uh enough to keep the listener, you know, engaged in everything that is the brand Eric Gales and it's gonna be, you know, if everything go well, I pray that I'm able to still be around to see the reapings. And I'm not meaning fiscally, I'm meaning you know, um, just genuinely see the rewards that come from all my life that I've given every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears to, you know, to <clears throat> devote to the most negative things. Negative things. Now, I want to have the opportunity, <coughs> the opportunity to de- <coughs> to devote everything that I can in the positive sense. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I mean, I see in a crystal ball that I can't, you know, <laughs> as, you know, d- d- like uh, detailedly go into discussion about, but I can just tell you, just get ready. Get ready. I should have shirts that say get ready. Get <laughs> That's ready. the next shirt. Get ready. That's the next shirt. That yeah. should be the next shirt. Yep. Man, your shirts are, your, your, your shirt changes are iconic. That's what I love, man. It's like every other shirt is like, like you just said, I should have a shirt that says that. I will tell all of you that if he says that, next week he's going to walk in oh, he's yeah. going to have a shirt that says that. Oh, yeah. It'll be hashtag get ready or it'll Show be get up. ready or whatever. Have Show a signature up. on the back. It do, It's happened. Yep. It's happened already. Yep. I've, seen the, I've seen the proof of it. <laughs> I've seen the proof. So the new record with Joe is coming out. Uh, uh, the new website launch. New website launch. Store on the website. And there's an email list. There's an email list you it guys is. can sign up for too, yes. right? Please subscribe because there are things that you as an email subscriber will have access to that the average public will not. And it's some it's some specific exclusive content that will be dispersed a couple of times a month depending on activity that um, you have to be a subscriber to be a part of. And you can get that access through going to the website ericgales.com so go to ericgales.com and you sign up there's a thing on there where you sign up for the email list and the crazy thing is like email lists have like come back they were like a thing early on and then they went away for a long time and now email lists are like a oh yeah they're like a thing i get emails from companies i get emails from all kinds of stuff and they Mm -hmm. announce the latest thing eric's is pretty exclusive in that there's stuff that they only announce in that email list, mm-hmm. they're not going to announce it on the website. They're not going to announce it on the stuff, but you got to be signed up for that list. Right. And it don't take but a second. Don't take but a second. Just enter your and email address. And here's and just in. You never know what I'm just going to randomly wake up one day and have as an exclusive that I have blasted out. But you have to be a subscriber. And it happens, just like him talking about the Get Ready shirt. It happens. I'm telling you. And I will tell you, with him being his own brand, with you being your own brand, What's amazing to me is that y- you are you are totally in control. Totally in control. I've heard you have conversations and say, well, no, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I have never heard one person ever say, well, Eric, we've got to do it this way. It's mm-hmm. like you, if they said that to you, you'd be like, click. Uh-huh. And the thing is, he does it the way he wants to do it. And that's the other thing, too, man, that I think is so cool in the brand and the story. And getting to the point that you're at is that you got you got. To the point that you're at with a lot of hard work, but it's but you didn't you didn't at any point take tell somebody to write you a check, write me a check, and I'll do anything you want, mm-hmm. man. It's on. You're at this point on your terms. On my terms, yeah. And I think that what I'm about to say is going to be the perfect segue into when you do the interview with Ladonna, and this is what you need to play before that interview with her starts. Everything that I have going on that is good, and even if it's bad, we walk through it together. Everything that is happening is all a by right, is all of a byproduct, is all of a result of being 
uh, nudged by a person that has given me nothing but positive and great reinforcement and positive back back a uh, bone, uh, you know, uh, a positive shoulder to lean on and all of that within that is all a result of this woman named LaDonna Gales. You can take that to the bank. That's how that take you to the bank that's and that's how, how it should lead that, into that's her how, show that's exactly how it should lead into right bank. on right there you go Shut your mouth Not- <laughs> hey <laughs> and this is the way it normally is when hey, we're together yeah, so man. we try we're to trying, he's trying to keep it astute <laughs> <laughs> trying to make the podcast very produced for you people <laughs> so yeah and 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 LaDonna's whole story, if, when I have her on, she got one of her I'm, I'm going to let her tell it. I ain't going to dig it. into it right now. But yeah, man. LaDonna is Eric's wife, and they are a team. And when it says Team EG, it, team is team is not I'm a throwaway trying, I'm word. I'm trying to tell you the truth. It is a team. I see them work together. I see them coexist together. I see them constantly conversing about the brand, about things to do, about stuff to do. And Life, everything, you know everything. what I mean? Just everything, you know, which, and, is, and which is how it should be. But Exactly. You know, hey, so, yeah, you got you to gotta stay, stay, stay tuned and keep subscribing to Benji's uh, podcast because I'm telling you, that's the next one that you don't want to miss. There's some nuggets in there that she has to offer and she has a story of her own of how me and her came to know each other and how me and her came to be a team and the struggles that we went through as a team of husband and wife and, you know, saw through to the next end. I think she have even more of a perseverance than me uh, as it relates to, you know, relationship and, and things of that nature and even her perspective of being married to a musician, uh, you know, her perspective of being in a relationship with somebody, you know, that, you know, the world feels like you know, uh, 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 they 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 are in 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 not necessarily entitled, but the world feels like they you know should get a piece of you know man you know we're, but at the same time her perspective is you know she didn't fall in love with me as the guitar player she fell in love with me as the human being so that is always going to be first and you know so y'all need to thank her for graciously how she has allowed me to be shared with you guys. Because I know a lot of other times that there have been situations and scenarios where the understanding is not so accepted. <clears throat> so, you know, my wife knows my ambition and she knows my drive and she knows what I think that I was brought here to do physically. Uh, and she helped encourages that and she has had my back since day one. And uh, yeah, I, you got it. Stay tuned. She got a story of her own. And you cross the line, she'll clamp it down, son. Clamp it. I'm trying to tell you the truth now. She, she, That's hey, what I love, she, man. Her sign is not Tars the Bull for nothing. <laughs> man. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about some of your... Let's talk about some of your gear. We'll 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 save this thing sitting on the table for the mm-hmm. for the for the grand finale. Yep. So, Amps. I have the Raw Dog DV Mark. Uh, they have been out for a couple of years now, and they're very for very affordable. They are the uh, uh, guitar side subsidiary of Mark Bass Amps, which is Bass Amps, and DV Mark is the guitar amp company that is under the heading of of Mark Bass. And I just got to tell you. There are other, you know, I think I can quote this. There are other friends of mine that have been having conversations and, and my my amp came up and it won the shootout out of a bunch of, a blind shootout out of a bunch of seriously badass other amps. And, you know, I am very happy with it. Um, on top of that, I have a signature Magneto Airgale Sonnet that is will be available to guitar. average consu- guitar that's average consumers around about 11, 1200 bucks. Uh, and you can have these right in your home, personally signed and everything that will be available, I think, the 1st of June, either the end of May or 1st of June. This is the new one, right? The new one, yeah. And, uh, you know, just, again, just capitalizing on the brand of, of, of EG and everything that is Eric Gales, you know, and uh, these are things that you ain't going to not see me using. And, uh, you know, it's stuff that I... That I that I love, you know. I got a lot of relationships with a whole lot of people that you know that uh, are considered companies that I endorse, <clears throat> and uh, you know Dunlop and 
<clears throat> Dunlop and other other companies that um, MXR that I I you know it kind of segues into this new pedal that's here this 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 raw dog um, overdrive pedal basically is a souped up tube screamer and uh, you know everything about it the the design the graphics and you know the sound and you know that's what kind of made the website launch such a huge success that they flooded how you know how massive of a big sale day that has happened since the pandemic started and it overwhelmed them that so many people bought in one day and uh it re- that's crazy if you don't have it you need to get yours is all i can say and it's a souped up um souped up you know eric gales george trips who is the brain behind this you know pedal and a lot of Joe Bonamassa's pedals, a lot of the, a lot of the signature pedals that are made over at MXR and Dunlap, George Trips. If you open his brain up, you'll find screwdrivers and, <laughs> and, and nuts and bolts and chassis and, and wiring and all that sort of stuff. He one of them type of dudes. Mad shout out to George Trips over there, uh, out there in LA. Uh, but yeah, things like that, man. And you know, just, you know, my mind is always working on, you know, how I can, embellish and develop and, and and still but yet target the the average consumer you know what i mean yeah, to man. you know for affordable you know especially in times of people the, the economy trying to get back right and you know and and and, and you know and the the amazing thing about the guitar the <coughs> magneto that you're talking about it, it, is there's an eric gale signature model that is a custom handmade handmade guitar that's a higher right? price yeah. that's a higher price right, that right. you can buy if you got the dough right and so what happens is a lot of companies that'll make a guitar and then they'll make an affordable version and the affordable version is kind of like you can always play the affordable version you can tell where they saved money mm-hmm. right? on this one i can't tell and i'm telling you guys I, I i was here the day that he walked in with that new one the prototype of the affordable model of the magneto and got it out and it, it looked like it just looked just like his other guitar. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, me, you know, guitar player, but not the guitar player in the room when he's <laughs> here. So I I look at this guitar and I think I'm going to pick this guitar up and I'm going to find I, I'm going to figure out exactly where they save some money. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you guys, I am not BSing you. This guitar plays as good as the original, the, the original ones. Yep. And they're not paying me to say that. They ain't giving me any guitars. They ain't doing any of that. I'm telling you straight up. And I told, like, my son plays guitar. And I told him when I got home, I said, it, your mind's going to be blown. I said, this guitar that's a third of the price probably of mm-hmm, your of, mm-hmm. of, of, of the big one. True. Right? Yep. And so trying to make this affordable for people, I think, is guys like Eric want these guitars in younger people's hands, in people that can't afford to pay that. Right. This exactly. is not an exclusive game when you try to when you try to get... When you try to get people on board with the musical thing and with kids and like fostering, you know, musical things like when you were a kid, Mm -hmm. you know, you didn't have three thousand dollars to buy a guitar when you were a kid. And a lot of people don't, you know. So when you make an affordable one, uh, but you make it as good as this one is made, it blows my mind, man. So uh, I was I was blown away my hat off to Magneto for doing that. And Mm -hmm. that is just killer. And so there's a portion of the show that I call One Piece. And what I ask is I ask my people to bring in one piece, one piece of gear, because every week it changes. It, I'm a guitar player. You're a guitar player. I'm a recording engineer. Every week it changes. What's my favorite piece of gear? Well, man, you got to check this out. Mm-hmm. And then next week, man, you got to check this out. Mm-hmm. Right? And so Eric has brought in, as he talked about, I'm going to show you the box. Because I got a camera, and it might be out of focus when I put it in the camera, but I really don't care. I'm going to put it in this camera right here, too, and see if it'll catch it. This is, let's see if I can get it on the camera that's pointing at me. This mm. is the MXR Raw Dog. And My Eric, Lord. Eric has talked to you about it already, but that is the one piece that he brought in. And I've heard it. And I've seen it in action, and I've heard it in action, and I've recorded it, and you just got to get one. Yeah. And they're, I said. they're available on? Uh, they're, they're, right now, they're available exclusively through ericgales.com forward slash store. 
Right and, now. Personally hand signed. Personally hand signed. Next month, they'll be in all the chains, Sweetwater, Guitar Center, all of that. But you won't get them personally signed and autographed and authenticated from my hands. <clears throat> Only this month. You can get them exclusively at ericgales.com. And I've seen the proof. This ain't no this ain't no decal stuck on the pedal with a signature I'm on it. I'm trying to tell you the truth, man. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about it. I texted him the day he was signing. I was like, hey, man, is your hand, is your hand falling off? That man, dude. <laughs> is your hand falling dude, off yet? Dude. So uh, my one piece, my one piece, this, uh, this episode also has to do with Mr. Gales. There's a company called Overloud. And they make an incredible plug-in for recording. It's called THU. Mm -hmm. And THU is their amplifier simulator. And it's an amplifier plug-in. A lot of guys like plug-ins. A lot of guys don't like plug-ins. But I will tell you, they're really, really convenient when the inspiration hits that I don't have to come out here and hook up mm -hmm. a bunch of amps and mics and I've forgotten what the riff is. If I grab a cable and I plug it in and I got my plug-in. But this thing, on top of being cool, and convenient and sounding killer has the EV, the 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 DV Mark Raw Dog sure. and presets personally personally approved Shit by mind. Eric and I <laughs> sitting sitting right here as we went through all the plugins and all the presets and we tweaked them a little bit and as I plugged into it. I'd watch his face, and you can see it. There's going to be some videos on their website <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. So there's a preset pack personally done by Mr. Gales uh, and with his with his raw dog and and however their signal chain goes. So that's going to be Overloud Technologies. I think you can Google uh -huh. search. I'm not exactly sure what their website is, Overloud yep. Technologies, and it's called the THU, but it's got a bunch of really cool amps in it. But the coolest amp it's got in it is his. Boom. And the presets that it's got are his, Boom. and they are from him. Boom. So, um, any final parting words that you might want to talk to the people? I, I know that when I see your show and you've talked about your show and you've talked about all that from your personal angle, from an audience standpoint and me seeing your show and I walk in, the amazing thing to me is you literally get your story. Mm -hmm. Your show is a combination of fireworks, mm. at guitar, pyrotechnics, <laughs> Let me just keep piling them on. Hold on, man. Guitar, You're doing good. You're doing good. Come on, can I can I keep going? So, um, and it's got some church in it, and it's got some inspiration. Mm -hmm. And to me, I was floored. And I watched you play. And the what's amazing to me is that I know the guys and and gals in your in your band, and I watch them follow you like they're like like y'all are in church. Mm -hmm. And that's what's amazing to me is you're going to get some EG tunes and you get some tunes that come out of nowhere and he'll make a set list out and then he'll throw it away man, and yell them out on the fly. Absolutely. And everybody in that band is total badasses, <laughs> follows you. And I've, you know, you watch it happen and it is, it's like, and, and it's like church. So, and, 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 and in that being, it's very much as if it's a, it's very much as if you get a different show every time. Yeah, I get your story. I get you telling people why you're why you are there and why you're where you're at. And I see you get choked up talking to people, and it's real. And there's nothing fake about it. And there's no now. Granted, they dress like bosses every day, but there ain't no <laughs> rock stardom in this show. You're gonna watch, you're gonna watch you're gonna watch him play like a rock star. But I'm going to tell you, man, there ain't no rock stardom ego. There's no nothing. He lays it all out before he starts playing, and then he plays and will totally blow your mind. Man. So if you have not seen him, go see him live. And if you haven't bought any records, they're everywhere. Yeah, man. Just go find them on all the usual suspects. Yeah. And Coming to a city near you on the website, hit tour schedule, and I just may be somewhere that you may be or close by. All of those that are in the Greensboro area, May 1, May 1st, I'll see you. Yeah. The Blind Tiger. If you're in the Asheville area, April 30th, I'll see you. I'll see you. If you're in the Statesville area, May, April 29th, I'll see you. So things are trying to come back together, and we just want everybody to be safe, man. You know, and, and, and we're trying to, you know, things are beginning to surface again, and uh, I hope all you be safe out there. And it's been wonderful chatting with you. 
Here, Benji, we in the studio a whole lot, man. I just want to let everybody know that anytime I call you, it don't matter if you got a session or something, man, you make time, and that is very invaluable to me, and I appreciate you. And uh, it always allows me the avenue to get an idea that has hit me in my head. And I'm like, man, I can't have it. <laughs> I got to get it out. <laughs> and, that's and, exactly- and, and all you say is come on by. I got you. <laughs> So <laughs> that is the relationship that we have, and uh, yeah, man, it is. We worked. Glad we, to know you, man. We, uh, dude, come on. Yeah, and, yep. and I, I, I appreciate all that, man. And, and and I appreciate you trusting me with the, with with your work. We've got a lot of stuff in the can. We got to we got to keep it about. quiet, but man, and I'm telling you, it's gonna see you, light of day. If we told you, we'd, we'd have, have to, to kill you. <laughs> So with that, I'm going to wrap up this episode of the Conversations in Groove podcast. My guest this time has been the indubitable, the ubiquitous Mr. Eric Gales. Boom. And you guys go to ericgales.com. All right, you ready? We'll do it on three, two, one. Three, two, one. Boom. Boom. See, what did I tell you? Told you it was going to be a cool episode, right? Cool and super, super groovy. You know why? Because this is Conversations in Groove. Check it out on our Earth Tones official YouTube channel and on all of your podcast apps. I'm Benji Johnson. I am your host, and I will be your host every week for Conversations in Groove live right here from Earth Tones Recording Studio.